absolutely lay on me. Can you please turn this up in my headphones? You got it, buddy. You know you love it. You gotta love it. What a great intro to a great episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. We've got a very special episode for all of you. Yes, we do. As we all know, we'll just get right into it. Next week is a very exciting week. We finish our buddy read of the Mistborn trilogy. We finish off with our episode discussing the hero of ages you know charles all good things must come to an end and buddy reads are no different yes but where one buddy read ends another buddy read begins and that's what brings us to today's episode that's a beautiful transition <laughs> well you, yeah we we set it up great uh, that's the thing. So once once we finish Mistborn Trilogy next week, the question becomes, well, what do we read next? We have a bunch of really good ideas. You know, we've, we've got a bunch of suggestions for each other. But the question becomes then, how do we pick? It's always a tough decision picking your next book, Charles. We're all familiar with that feeling when we've just finished a series and we're like, what? do I do with myself now? Especially a series like Mistborn. It's going to leave such a hole in our hearts. This is our first ever series on the podcast. We're going to go into uncharted territory after this. We, yeah. we don't have anything planned. Not yet. But I have a feeling that today's episode will rectify that. Very, very good transition, sir. You couldn't be more correct. What we've decided when we were trying to come up with an idea for this week's episode was what if we made it about deciding our next buddy read? So what we've come up with is a little system that we are calling Friends Pitching Fantasy, the fate of the buddy read. Nailed it. Nailed it. So I guess um, without further ado, we'll just get right into how this is going to work. How is it going to work, Charles? Well, I'll tell you, Dylan. This is a brand new segment, the Friends Pitching Fantasy segment. How it works, we're splitting it into four rounds. Those rounds will consist of us sharing books, discussing them, crossing them off until we end up with two books. Here's how it works. Dylan and I have each prepared three books to present to the other individual. These are books that we have read, but our buddy has not read. So six books in total we are considering for today's Charles, segment. Charles, is that true that you've read all three of your books? Well, the series, but you're pitching the first book. So it's... Okay. You could say three books or three series. They're series, but we're pitching the first book. But it is we will read the whole series of whatever we decide. So we'll, we'll, we'll call it series from now on if that makes you happy. I'll be so happy now, Charles. Because you are right. This series is, is the better word. So <laughs> I, I think you, uh, you're keeping us honest here, which is great. So we Someone's each got to. You know, someone's got to, and I'm I'm so happy that you're here to police the uh, the content. It's much needed. That's what buddies are for. Exactly. T together, we create something better than our individual parts. Yep, we're greater yeah. than the sum of our parts. For sure, for sure. So we're each going to present three series to the other. These are series that we have read, but our buddy has not. So here's how we end up going from three series each to one series each. Round one is what we call the desk rejection, and this title comes from Dylan's expertise in the world of academia. How this is going to work? I'd say expertise. Experience. Yeah, you got to take the compliment, Dylan. You you deserve it. 
Um, I appreciate that, Charles. <laughs> so we've got uh, three options each. We're just all we're gonna do is list the name of the series of all of our series. Put all the cards on the table, and then I'm going to automatically, without any uh, explanation, reject one of Dylan's suggestions, and Dylan is going to do the same with one of my suggestions. Once we have two series each, we go into round two, which we will call deliberation. In the deliberation round, we are going to take about three minutes per series for the person who suggested the series to give opening statements. This is us essentially pleading our case for why this series will be the next book that we're going to read. So after the opening statements ends, which we're going to give about three minutes to, for the sake of expediency, we'll ask some questions, we'll have a little back and forth, and then we'll move on to the next series. Once we have deliberated on all four of the series, we'll go into the next round called Decision. Dylan's going to pick one of my series. I'm going to pick one of Dylan's. At this point, we've picked the books that we're going to read next. To determine the order, we're just going to go into round four, which I like to call Destiny, and then we, which is just a coin flip to decide which one we're going to read first. And Charles, all credit goes to you for that wonderful alliteration. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, for those of you paying attention at home, each round starts with the letter D, some beautiful alliteration to make use of my uh, marketing background. So... Is that what they teach you? <laughs> it's the part of it. People love it when the words start with the same letter. They do. <laughs> they do. So, that's how it works. If you aren't quite on top of it, don't worry. We're going to go through the whole thing nice and easy. It's going to be very straightforward. Uh, do you have any questions, Dylan, before we get into the round one? Well, I'll say... Keeping in the spirit of academia, not really a question, more of a comment, which is, that's a, for those academics out there, that's a joke about conferences. People always are supposed to ask questions, but they give comments. I'll say that the, the heart of this comes from that, you know, Charles and I have both read series that the other has not, and a lot of times where they're wishing that the other one would read this series that we yes. love. Yes. And I think a lot of y'all out there probably can relate to that experience when your buddy for one reason or another is not reading a series that you love and want to talk to them about. And at least in my case, and I figure in yours too, Charles, uh, I'm really excited to do some friends pitching fantasy to see if I can sell you on one of these. <laughs> yes, I mean, we're both very excited about the series that we're about to pitch today. I think you said that very well. This is all in the spirit of our desire to share these series that we've enjoyed that we haven't had the opportunity to discuss with each other. So six very strong series are going to be presented and we're all excited about them and i'm really curious to see how this ends up i am too well are we ready to move toward the desk rejection round well do you uh do you agree to the terms outlined in uh <laughs> <laughs> in this in the friends pitching fantasy segment what did you say last episode? I was there when they were written. Yes. <laughs> yes, to quote Aslan. Yeah, I think there's actually a very similar line early in Mistborn that I picked up on uh, early in the third book, The Hero of Ages, where Tensoon says basically the same thing. Like, don't quote the first contract, to, or not the first contract, don't quote some contract to me. I was there when it was written. <laughs> That's paraphrasing. Well, we shall go forward under the grace of the podcasting gods as our witness to begin our very first Friends Pitching Fantasy segment. Let's do it. We are entering round one, the desk rejection phase. And Dylan, I invite you to 
let the world know what three series you are suggesting that we read next. Okay. I have some heavy hitters out there. The first series is the King Killer Chronicle, beginning with na- the name of the wind. That's a by great choice. Patrick Rothfuss. I'm very excited the, about that one. Well, uh, we'll see which one you uh, end up <laughs> giving the desk rejection here. We shall. Yep. The next series is the Gentleman Bastard series, beginning with The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. And great. the last series that I am right now pitching for the opportunity to pitch is the Broken Earth Trilogy, beginning with the fifth season by N.K. Jemison. This is a great list. I have had uh, the King Killer Chronicle and the Gentleman Bastard series on my to read list for years and years. What's kept me from actually reading them is they have this thing about picking up uh, series that aren't finished. I don't want another like Game of Thrones situation where you read it and then years and years go by and, and by the time the next book comes out, you forgot everything that happened and had to read them all again. So I just, in fear of that, never picked them up. But I've been itching to read them and I think the podcast would be a great vehicle to help jog my memory for if and when the last of those series ever come out. And then I remember you recommending the Broken Earth trilogy a while back, and it's definitely piqued my interest for a long time. So the question becomes, which one do I reject? And this was not an easy choice. You gave me a tough go. And this might be an unusual um, pick. I'm not sure if you're expecting me to pick this one. But I'm going to pick the Gentleman Bastard series as my desk rejection. Wow. And I I... feel kind of bad about that. Yeah, you probably should. I I was really excited about my pitch for that one. I feel like that was probably my strongest actual pitch. I'm sorry. But maybe there'll be another friend's pitching fantasy episode please pitch it again please pitch it again because i do want to read it but here's why it's getting axed i like the broken earth trilogy. i want to hear your pitch for the broken earth trilogy because it's the series i know the least about and it's actually complete so that's why i want to hear it and then when it came down to king killer chronicles and gentlemen bastards i'm really excited to read them both but i'm probably just a little more excited to read king killer chronicle and i know that the gentleman bastard series you've mentioned before has um diminishing returns as the series goes on which um not a deterrent for me but it just kind of helps make it easier to pick a completed series and an incomplete one so that's kind of was my philosophy behind this uh desk rejection i really hate to do it and i know uh lock lamora was one of your favorite characters from our character discussion podcast and it really pained me to to reject it but please pitch it again if we ever do this again because we will read that series well i feel like you really let me down gently there (laughs) charles and i appreciate it you know it would have been hard to see any of these go yes i think that was a tough one because when i was writing the pitch for this one i was like oh i feel like actually constructed a a good one here, but I'd be excited to read any. Did you think? Books, did so. you think that I was gonna ask Broken Earth trilogy? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I almost thought... did. <laughs> well, I I get why you didn't, and I wouldn't have thrown all these up there if I didn't think that they were all very worthy, awesome books. And I think, yeah, well, I'll get into the reasons why when we do the pitches. Great. So. That was your series. Here's my three series. No surprise to anyone that's listened to this podcast so far. I'm putting forth The Lord of the Rings, beginning with The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. That's all I can say about it. (laughs) Uh, The next series that I am presenting is The Wheel of Time, beginning with The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. 
And the third series is the Night Angel Trilogy, beginning with The Way of Shadows by Mr. Brent Weeks. It's uh, real, really interesting, I'll say, first of all, three choices. Yes. And definitely some big hitters. Some ambitious pitches in this one. (laughs) Well, I'm interested, Charles. Which do you think I am going to desk reject, knowing me? You want me to say it before you pick? I, I kind of do. I can I write it down. <laughs> yeah, write it down and then reveal it. And in the meantime, I'll talk through. Okay, with Marsh and the podcasting gods as my witness, I'm writing down what I think is going to be Marsh's pick. And I'm folding the paper. So, you've been trying to get me to read Lord of the Rings for a long time, Charles. Obviously, I've seen the movies. We watched them together before our big New Zealand trip. I also have been flirting with the idea of reading Wheel of Time for a while. That's definitely one that's been on my to-be-read list for a long time. And then I I think that the Night Angel trilogy is probably the one that if I were just going to pick up a book right now you know, to read and, and we don't, weren't doing the podcast, it's probably the most likely one of the three that would be the next series I pick up. That being said... I'm going to desk reject the Night Angel trilogy. Wow. That's not what I was ready for. I wrote down W-O-T, Wheel of Time. Wow. I thought for yeah. sure you were going to reject that one. Yeah. Because it's I 14 books long. Wrong. Yeah. It's wow. 14 books long. And, you know, the 14 books that I, I want to read at some point... The Night Angel trilogy, I was worried coming off Mistborn, maybe there'd be some similarities. It wouldn't be a, enough of a change of pace. That's true. And I mean, a part of why least... I picked it was because it was it it welcomes a lot of comparisons to the Mistborn trilogy. Well, I think Mark Lawrence in his review of the first Mistborn that we had during our review of the reviews episode or sorry during the that was before we split off review of the reviews into right. its own segment you're during correct. the first Mistborn you know your FTF <laughs> podcast trivia <laughs> yeah I do so uh, I think that Mark Lawrence compared Mistborn the Final Empire to Brent Weeks's work and yes. I think I'm ready for something different and I think your two other series are are very different from Mistborn. Well, I can appreciate that. And I just want it to be said before we move on that I put the Night Angel trilogy in my list of series for you because it is an edgy, grim, dark fantasy world with gray characters. And I know that's what my buddy Dylan likes. And (laughs) I thought it could be interesting to compare it to Mistborn, but I am okay with your decision. I the only one that I would have maybe jaw dropped was be if you had the the gall to to axe Lord of the Rings right at the top. <laughs> so, no, I, but you didn't. I don't think I have that in me. You didn't do that. You put some respect on the name, and uh, you gotta put some respect on the name Tolkien. Yeah. And so I'll say that's why I was saying Brent Weeks. It's the kind of book that before we were doing this, I would just kind of grab because it's it's so much like all the other books that i mean not necessarily so similar that i'm sure it wouldn't be worth reading or anything like that but it just has the same feel of the kind of books that i often pick up and you know we're doing this podcast we're buddy reading i think it's time for something a little different i appreciate that and i will just say that anyone who is reading mistborn along with us and really enjoyed it and wants to keep going down that path i think this would be a i think the night angel trilogy would be a great option for those people out there 
But nice. there we have. I'm surprised you didn't sneak any Abercrombie into your list. Um, yeah, I was half I thought expecting about it. it. I mean, I, what I did was I picked three authors that you have never read before, and I did that purposefully. Great, I appreciate that. And also with Abercrombie, it would be tough to not have to go through the original trilogy again, which we both have read. So it kind of, um. Kind of encroaches on those the... too. Yeah. So I would be re rereading them, <laughs> and you know I, I'm okay with just a normal reread instead of a re reread. Uh, for now, I think we'll definitely cover. The we first have law to. Because we have that's to. Basically, my favorite series. But we I will. I just finished rereading it and reading that first book of the new trilogy. So I'll give it a little break. That is very fair. And so ends the desk rejection. Poor Gentleman Bastards and Night Angel Trilogy. We, I have a feeling we haven't heard the last of them. But for now... Me too. For now, that is, that is all from them. Which brings us to our second round of the Friends Pitching Fantasy segment of the Friends Talking Fantasy podcast, which is Deliberation. So in this stage now, we have four series remaining. We have uh, King Killer Chronicles, the Broken Earth Trilogy, the Lord of the Rings, and the Wheel of Time. What we're going to do is we're going to alternate, um, giving our opening statements, and there'll be a little Q&A sesh afterwards for each book. And I think we're going to alternate um, series. Is that how we're going to do this? You start and then I'll do yes. the next one? Okay, so whenever sure. you're ready, if you want to get us started, um, you're going to start with King Killer Chronicles or Broken Earth? I'll start with King Killer Chronicle. Let's do it. All right, Charles. So behind maybe the Stormlight Archive, the King Killer Chronicle is likely the number one most popular modern fantasy series that you have yet to read. And it's much less of a commitment than would be starting with the Stormlight Archives. And I can confidently say that Patrick Rothfuss is the most prominent modern fantasy author that you have yet to read anything from. Likewise, Patrick Rothfuss is perhaps the most controversial author within the entire fantasy community. Mm -hmm. So when posts that focus on Rothfuss come up on our fantasy, the popular subreddit, everyone's got an opinion and things get pretty heated to the point that oftentimes the mods have to shut things down and remind people that rule one of the community is to be kind. Uh, that's yeah. a good rule. It is a good rule. <laughs> it also features what is likely the most controversial main character in the whole fantasy, fantasy genre in quoth and the most contentious love interest in the whole genre. So, Charles, if I know you, which I, I like to think I do after all of these years, fair. I know that you want to have an opinion on all of this. Here, here. So my number one reason why you should read the King Killer Chronicle doesn't even hinge on it being good, although it is, it hinges on the fact that you're missing out on one of the biggest conversations in the modern fantasy community. Here, here. The series has several strong points, the first of which is the prose. I know we spoke about how Sanderson likes to write prose as though it was a clear window through which you can see the story. Rothfuss takes a different approach, which I think will be a nice change of scenery juxtaposed against the series we're just finishing up now in Mistborn. Yeah. I think he has, Rothfuss that is, I think he has the best prose in the whole genre. And Rothfuss will drop some lines at you that you'll think are great turns of phrases and you might actually stop and and think about that the magic system is solid too i know we've talked about some hard and soft magic system stuff and what rothfuss does extremely well in this book is balance having both a hard and a soft magic system yeah, yeah. in the same series and both of them are really well done i know you like books that have a school setting you like 
Harry Potter books. I believe you took us to see one of the Harry Potter movies for one of your birthdays when we were kids. It's true. I did do that. Okay. And I know you love the Magician's novels. Another one. This series, The uh, Name of the Wind, heavily features a school atmosphere, too. I leave you with a quote that features on the back of the book to give you an idea what you'd be in for. It's, I have stolen princesses back from sleeping barrel kings. I burned down the town of Traybor- Traybon. I have spent the night with Felorian and left with both my sanity and my life. I was expelled from the university at a younger age than most people are allowed in. I tread paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during day. I've talked to gods, loved women, and written songs that make the minstrels weep. You may have heard of me. Here, here. Here, here. Very nice job, sir. That was beautiful. You made some very strong points. I do genuinely feel like I'm missing out by having not read the king killer chronicles and it was smart of you to have focused on that at the top of your of your pitch so really this is why it's friends pitching fantasy because really Charles, good stuff the way you play the man here you don't play the book so true so true um so i and the q a phase of all this Let's go ahead and start with my first question, which is, should we be starting an unfinished series? I, there's one book left, and there's no release date in sight for this final book. Wouldn't it be better to schedule this buddy read uh, closer to the release date of this final book if, if and when it finally gets announced? Charles... I I don't want to pile on Rothfuss here. I I think that he should take as much time as he needs to Definitely. get this third book right. Agree. So I don't want it to come from that place when I say this. But we have no idea when that's <laughs> going to be that that third book comes out. True. And I think that you're you're missing out, and you'd be missing out indefinitely if you just decide, hey, I'm never going to read these two great books until the third one is announced. I mean, that might not be for at least years. I mean, uh, no one would be surprised if it's several more years before that third book is even announced. And I just think this is a book that we'd be remiss not to cover in the next several years anyway. And I think we might as well do it now. Well said. Hear, hear. Um, I only have one other question prepared for this, but you may have sparked a third one. We'll see. And this, this question is, why would I choose this series over the Broken Earth trilogy? How would you compare the two? Why would I choose this over? I know you're going to go more without going too into Broken Earth Trilogy because you have the pitch prepared, but when you compare them directly, what's the. What am I choosing between? Wow. I love this question, and I'm going to steal this question <laughs> when, you, uh, when you get around to your pitches. I mean, the books are so different, and you'll you'll see that. You'll see when I get to my Broken Earth right, pitch right. what I'm talking about there, and I don't want to take away no, from the no, power No, no, just the summation, pitch. yeah. So I would say if you picked this book over the Broken Earth trilogy, it would be A, because you want to be able to have these conversations you want to know about the king killer chronicle i think the the broken earth trilogy obviously has made an impact but it's more recent it kind of hasn't had the same time that king killer has to stir up the fantasy community to the same extent i would say Mm -hmm. and you'd be you'd be picking it i think a big part is because of the the prose honestly i'm gonna stand by that it's just i remember when i was reading this book for the first time 
that I would just stop and think, wow, I just love the way he said that. I would read the line again and be like, wow. And I think that it's uh, it's different from the way that the book we're coming off Mistborn was. Right. And I, I know I noted that in my pitch. I think that you'll like that change of pace. And I, I think the pros would be a big part there. Great. But right. most of all, it is the the being a part of this conversation. Sure. The pros and the prestige. <laughs> Getting back to some yes. alliteration there. That's great. So I guess the only other question that I didn't prepare, but your, your speech made me think of it. This is to show you how out of the loop I am with this series. What is so controversial about Patrick? Uh, well, I... I'll say what some people like to say about Rothfuss. They get on him because when he first came out with Name of the Wind, he said in an interview that all three books were already written and explicitly said that we would not have a Game of Thrones type situation. And... That's where all the controversy is coming from? The the timeline? Well, there's more. Okay. There's more. But that's, I would say that's the biggest thing is he said, hey, we're not going to, I don't think he explicitly mentioned Game of Thrones, but I think he said, we're not going to end up in one of those situations where we're waiting forever for the next books to come out. So he acted like it's what Joe Abercrombie is doing, which is he already wrote this new trilogy and is just releasing them each year at the same time. But that actually, as we've come to know, is not the case with the King Killer Chronicle. And people felt betrayed by that, especially that he <laughs> he referenced this idea of I don't want to, or it's not going to be like one of those other series that's never finished. Yeah, that's tough. And then he became, I would say, the poster child for a <laughs> child, the poster person for. <laughs> Funny to picture. I know what he looks <laughs> like, so I don't really picture him as a child with, a with that beard. huge beard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he became the face of people who don't finish books. And it's in the fantasy genre. And I think that that's that's been really tough for him he also is pretty outspoken i would say about a lot of things including basically some people felt years ago he would lash out at fans i haven't seen people Mm. doing much of that but he was getting so much flack and he's had some mental health difficulties that uh, he's he's been very public about, which I, I really appreciate as someone in the mental health field. He does a lot to try to reduce the stigma of mm-hmm. mental health uh, issues. And I, I appreciate that. But I, I think, you know, sometimes when you're struggling, you'll lash out some. And sure. I don't think it represents your character necessarily. But people took that pretty hard, too. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the book has a lot of elements that people find pretty controversial that kind of gets wrapped up in all this of who Rothfuss is. Okay. Well, that's, uh, understand. And I can, I can get, I can understand that, you know, as long as I was wondering what exactly, there's nothing that I would consider that crazy. So that's good to know. Well, that's, that's it for my questions for the King Killer Chronicles. I think that was well stated. You make a very strong case. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Looking forward to getting into one of your books. Yeah, I'm going to just start right away with The Lord of the Rings. Let's just go ahead and, and just do it. So Let's do it. Oh, boy. Okay. Does this series even need an explanation? It is the most popular fantasy series ever, uncontested. I mean, you could, even if it's not your favorite series, which I imagine for a lot of most modern fantasy readers, it's not... You still got to put respect on the name. This is like the most influential work of fantasy in modern times. Um, Although it rates shockingly low on bestfantasybooks.com, which you and I both 
No, very well. At number six, it is ranked number one on the publicly ranked version, the user voted list. So we know that it's got a lot of publicity around it. No surprise there. Lots of interest in the general public. No surprise there. You need to have more old traditional fantasy under your belt, Marsh. Not only did I pick this series because it's one of my personal favorites, but I think it's a huge hole in your resume as a, as a fantasy reader and as a fantasy podcaster. I mean, you, you just can't be the face of a fantasy podcast and not have read Lord of the Rings. It's it's out of control. And the fact you haven't yet is is, is shocking. Uh, you've even been to Middle Earth in person for Sanderson's sake. I, you flew, you climbed Mount Doom. <laughs> you went to Hobbiton. You were there. You've you've um, been to Riverdale. Rivendell. You've seen it all. So the fact that the only thing you haven't done is just read the books is, is uh, out of control. I think we just need to finally cross this thing off your list uh, from an academic standpoint which i know is one that um, you take very seriously this is a series that all modern fantasy is is based on studying the classics like lord of the rings will give you a greater appreciation for these contemporary works that you're reading you know all of the all of the tropes that modern fantasy writers are expanding on and subversing and all this other stuff it is based on their love and appreciation for Lord of the Rings and not wanting to write, you know, the same book twice. We know Tolkien clones are a huge issue uh, in like right before this renaissance of modern fantasy. Uh, so here's what you don't get from the movies. The prose. I mean, you talk about King Killer Chronicles having amazing prose. Tolkien, it's it's like reading poetry. Uh, beyond that, the 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 movies don't give you Tolkien's in, intended story structure, the pacing, the detail. You understand why certain things happen the way they do, whereas in the movie, something just happens, and you're like, you may not even understand what underlying factors were in play to make the plot progress as it does in the movies. So, in summation. Lord of the Rings is epic in the true sense of the word, from story to the poetic prose. It's one of my favorite works of fiction, and I would just love the opportunity to share it with you in our buddy read. And coincidentally, I also decided to end my pitch with a quote. And I promise you listeners at home, we nice. did not collaborate. But this is Frodo and Gandalf talking. Frodo, I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. Gandalf. So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And beautiful. I went a little over on time, but it's the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> give me a, some, give, <laughs> That's give me a break. That's keeping in tradition <laughs> with Lord of the Rings. It's, it's the extended version of the. Time. It's yeah. the extended version of the uh, of the of the opening statements. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll have a truncated version uh, <laughs> that people can access to, but everyone will know the extended version is better. Right. Well, I think you nailed it with that. I I think you, you hit on, this is why it's friends pitching fantasy. Yes. Because you addressed my two main questions that I wrote beforehand. My first question was literally, what will the books provide me that the movies didn't? <laughs> Dude, I got you. And it's the prose is the first thing. It's written like poetry. I mean, they do a great job of of putting a lot of the highlights in the in the in the movies but just the narrate like the point of view and the descriptions and things you lose out on that in the in the movies so that's a huge part of it well charles it's interesting because you also addressed the thing that was big in well my second question which i think this one i'll actually ask i i was wondering is the prose going to be dry and almost archaic that's a very feel? good question i've heard there's lots of landscape description and stuff like that and you know i'm a character guy yes so will i feel like the way this is written is too dry i'm going to be honest with you 
there are going to be points, especially in the very beginning, that you're going to just have to read through. I mean, it's written in an entertaining way and it's written in a beautiful way, but it is a lot of description. When I recommend the books to people, or when I talk to people that have given up on the books, I tell them, look, you just, you have to just read to the point where you get to the Council of Elrond. And then once you get there and you start to recognize the beats from the movies and things, and, and then the story really takes off from there. That's where they make the plan to form a fellowship and take the ring to Mount Doom. So once that happens, then the books just take off and... It's not free of lengthy descriptions going forward, but the books aren't that long. They're no longer than the Mistborn trilogy, so it's not like anything is going to be too drawn out, and the scenes that do happen and the characters and the story are so amazing that it's worth reading, like, you know, 20 pages about Hobbiton to get to that point. But that is going to be... I'm not going to think you're going to read this and it's going to become your favorite series, you you lean too heavily in modern fantasy, but I do think you'll get a lot out of it and you'll have a great appreciation for it. Yeah, well, I appreciate your willingness to acknowledge some things that I might not love about the the series. Mm-hmm. I So here's something that I'm wondering, Charles. Mm-hmm. Will I really gravitate toward any of the characters in Lord of the Rings? You will have an appreciation for many of them. I know your preference towards the rogue-like gray morality characters. There's going to be very few of those in this series. This is a much more traditional, like, uh, characters are very virtuistic in a lot of ways and um, it's more like an old school good versus evil story that being said there is corruption and there's a lot of like poetic works going on like you know the whole story like when Boromir tries to take the ring from Frodo it's, and then confesses to Aragon it's like that's a really touching moment in the in the first book that is absolutely beautiful when Sam carries Frodo up the mountain you know there's so many moments and and then um Faramir's relationship with his father and his and Boromir who's not even alive anymore it's there's a lot of really interesting moments that I think you will enjoy and you know Gollum Smeagol is still there he's gray enough (laughs) that it will get you by um it's I think you're going what's going to be the best thing is you're going to get wrapped up in the epicness of it like reading Mistborn there's a lot of great plays on character types and tropes and really great plot reveals and things but Lord of the Rings is just so much more epic in its nature like a real old school epic tale and that's something that is rare that I think is going to make this well worth reading all right you you drive a hard bargain there, Charles. <laughs> well, I am pitching Lord of the Rings to a, an, a fantasy podcast. so Yeah. I think the biggest thing well, is that you just have to read it already. That's the biggest pitch. Mm-hmm. It's like, just read it already. Leaning on similar to what I, <laughs> I leaned on. Yes, the yes. Now. That's the biggest pull of it. That That makes sense. I think. Do I get another question? Since yeah, you can ask one, another we'll one, and then we'll the, we gotta go pitch. quick into Broken Earth. So go for it. Well, I want to I want to ask the question that you asked me, which is why would I choose Lord of the Rings over Wheel of Time? Well, they're both great picks, but Lord of the Rings is just it is the series. You just have to read it. Wheel of Time is also a very well-established, highly respected series, but Lord of the Rings is OG. And just to have that notch in your belt is um, enough of a reason to choose it. I'll also say it's significantly shorter. It's only three books. We can keep it on our every other week rotation, no problem. If we 
you know, 14 books for Wheel of Time, and they're all, like, just as long, if not longer, than any single Lord of the Rings book. So just the length alone is another good reason. Um, if you're just... if To compare the actual stories outside the meta reasons, uh, we're talking the prose. We're talking the epic nature of the story. I mean, Wheel of Time, you can really get lost in the world, but Lord of the Rings just has this, um, like, magic quality to it this like true epic tale that is, is very powerful so those are the reasons Sounds why i like would choose it epicness and leaning on that it is lord of the rings yes and the practicality <laughs> of it in that. terms of a production schedule standpoint uh is another re- very that's important what, reason. That's what the listeners want to hear: is us work out the logistics of our production. <laughs> well, schedule. I think they would appreciate it. You know, think about it: at fourteen books, we're, we're talking about half a year, six months or more, if we kept it up at the a book every two weeks. That's a lot of time to just be talking about one series. But I can, I'm going to get into that in my pitch. But Well, uh, is your pitch against Wheel of Time? <laughs> no, it's for it. And I have, <laughs> trust me, I've I figured it out, but that's for the pitch. But just from that standpoint, okay. it is a lot. Yeah. Well, I think you, you succeeded in both pitching Lord of the Rings and... Uh, getting down on Wheel of Time in that <laughs> first pitch. So I'm interested to see Wheel of Time will have its time come to back shine. from that. You'll see. I'm looking I mean, you asked to... why I'd pick Lord of the Rings over Wheel of Time, so that's how I got to answer the question. That's fair. Maybe I was a little too evasive in my <laughs> answer. There. Always oh. trying to make everyone happy they're doing. You know me. <laughs> Wheel of Time will get its time. All right. Well, shall we just move on? Yes, to let's do it. Broken Earth, or yeah, let's do it. All right. Here is my pitch. So, I'm starting with a, a quick synopsis because Charles, I, I feel like you're not overly familiar with this series. Right. This is Sorry. of all the series, the one I know the least for sure. Yeah. So this is. I grabbed this from Hachette Books, a website. A season of endings has begun. It starts with the Great Red Rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death, with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is the stillness, a land long familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. No and Yikes. yeah sounds rough so yeah you usually want at least a little mercy so but maybe not in a book or series the pitch for the broken earth trilogy begins with the fact that it won three consecutive hugo awards for best novel in other words Every book in the series won a Hugo Award back to back to back. That's a prestigious award in speculative fiction for any listeners unaware. I know you're aware, Mm -hmm. Charles. I am. It was also nominated for The Nebula, World Fantasy, James Tiptree Jr., Dragon, Audi, Audi, (laughs) Locus, Kitsji, Goodreads Choice, Romy might have been involved in that oh, one. Oh, and I hope so. People's Choice Awards. Wow. It was named a New York Times Notable Book of 2015. All right. That's the pedigree we're dealing with here. That's a lot of honor. Yes. It's a book with a ton of thematic depth to it. It is smartly written with also great prose and real feeling characters. The book is just different, Charles. It's not like anything else I've read for several reasons. It toys with some interesting writing techniques that I've never seen implemented. One that won't spoil anything is to tell you that there's many chapters written in second person writing style, which is very atypical. That means uh, I've heard of it. 
Yeah. Well, I'm any listeners who don't know, it would be something like you rather than I is the way that the narration is written, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it works surprisingly well for putting you in the shoes of the character. I know I was a little worried it would feel like one of those goosebumps, choose your own adventure books I used to read <laughs> as a kid, but it, it doesn't. It does a really great job of building empathy for the character. The other thing that N.K. Jemison does that I've never seen done before would be a spoiler to reveal, but I'll just say, trust me as your buddy. That is really interesting, and you've never seen anything like it. Let myself a good spoiler. The New York Times called it intricate and extraordinary. The Washington Post called it brilliant, and I stand by the Library Journal when they say it breaks new ground. We spoke about doing a best opening lines episode, which is a tease for the listeners. This book has an incredible opening line that I will leave you with. Let's start with the end of the world, why don't we? Get it over with and move on to more interesting things. Ah. All right. I mean, great pitch. I mean, the fact that the entire series, each book in the series as a Hugo Award is quite a um quite an accomplishment in itself. Yeah. Um well, one of the questions that I was going to ask that you answered right in the in the pitch is is the because I was reading a lot of reviews online researching this series, and the main complaints people have is the author's choice of writing both in present tense and second person. And one of my questions was, is the author's choice of writing it in that way challenging, and does it detract from the experience of reading the story? Um, yeah, well, as I said, I don't really think it takes away at all. And I, I think it's a really strong use of it. And it it makes sense narratively. I won't, I won't say more than that. And it also, I think, builds empathy for a character that's dealing with trauma. You're, it's trying to put you in the shoes of this person. And there's also there's almost this like detached while oh, close. <laughs> I know that hardly makes any sense. This uh, feeling like you are this person, but you're almost dealing with some of the derealization and depersonalization that comes with undergoing a really traumatic situation. And that's how it starts with that Beautiful. second person narration. It does pique my interest. I have to say like, one of the strongest things you said in your pitch for me is is how unique of an experience it is and how unlike anything else I've read it could be. And I've read so much of stuff that's built on the backs of other things. And it would be nice to read something that has a little bit of fresh air breathed into it. So that's a exciting um, prospect for me. Going back to reading through my reviews that were criticizing the series um it won a lot of awards you know it's flooded with really positive reviews but there's plenty of people out there who think that the series is overrated and i guess my question is what do you say to the criticism that this series is overrated and does it stand up against the other series that we're discussing tonight and i mean that's bold when we're just talking about flipping Lord of the Rings and stuff, but I guess within your seat, within like the King Killer Chronicles and like the more modern things, Night Angel trilogy, things like that. Are we talking about the same level of, of um, pedigree, I guess, for lack of a better word from like, you know, for mastery, like quality, quality. Thank you. Yes. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Well, I think that this is a book that's being, it's obviously gotten a lot of mainstream success. It's being recommended, though, on all these fantasy forums yes. and whatnot. And there's people out there who are looking for the same thing and maybe not regurgitate over and over again, which I almost said. They're looking for things that hit on the same general setting, the, the same, same beats, general note, same beats. Yes. Okay. And. I think, yeah, if you are someone who loved Mistborn and then you're looking at what series you should read next on our fantasy and you see uh, 
I obviously haven't read the Night Angel trilogy, but you see that recommended, and you also see people saying great things about the fifth season, the the first book in mm-hmm. the Broken Earth trilogy. And do you go for the fifth season, and you're like, this is nothing like Mistborn? Then maybe, yeah, maybe you don't love it. But I I think that. If you're ready for a breath of fresh air, you're ready for something that's not like other stuff you've read, then you're going to find that in this series. And I I think you'll like it because I think you will appreciate a lot of what's done in these books. But I... uh, I don't know. I mean, at, at the very least, you'll get an idea right. of what this has to offer. Well said. Uh, I was kind of getting those vibes. Because I'm, as we know from review of reviews, you can't trust everything that's put up there, you know. So yeah. it makes sense that a lot of these overrated comments would just be people whose expectations weren't met. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, especially for what excites me most about the trilogy. So, well said. My only other question is, so we this podcast is brand spanking new. We just are about on the cusp of finishing our first series, which is Mistborn. And my question is, is this too deep of a cut for our second series ever? And wouldn't it be more beneficial to go through more established works first just to set a tone and precedent for the show i think that's a fair question and one worth raising it's it's an interesting situation where uh, i mean when i'm looking at the back of this book i'm seeing quotes from npr from the washington post from the new york times obviously it and of course the hugo awards obviously it made a large impact. I, I think that, yeah, King Killer Chronicles is bigger because of what I mentioned before with the just the time it's had to really become a classic in the genre. I would say that time has given people a lot more chances to read that. It's series, number four so best series on bestfantasybooks.com. Is that the user ratings? No, that is the official ratings. I don't know what the user ratings are. I didn't write them down. I'm sure it's way up It's there. in the top I mean, five, I'm pretty sure. It's sold, I think I, I saw this when I was doing some of my research. I think the series, has the King Killer Chronicle, that is, has sold 10 million books. Wow. Uh, yeah, don't quote me on that, but it's on the Wikipedia, and I, I think that was it. And I think that if your number one concern is maximizing the amount of people who have read the series to this point, then King Killer does make more sense than does the broken earth trilogy. So, I mean, if that's going to be the criteria, I'm not going to, I'm not going to act like it's different, but I also want to say, obviously this is a book, although newer, that is relevant to the current conversation about fantasy novels. Great. Okay. Well, you've made a very strong case and I have a very difficult choice to make, but first I'm going to jump right into my our final deliberation for the day. Let's hear it. And that is The Wheel of Time. Another series that needs little explanation, but here we are. Uh, So let's just uh, get right into it. Wheel of Time has some of the most engaging, world-building, magic systems, and characters in all of fantasy, and many, many Fans of the fantasy genre hail it as the gold standard for epic and high fantasy. And although it rates inexcusably low on bestfantasybooks.com at number 48 (laughs) for best series, it sits proudly at number four on the user ranked list. So here is something that way over indexes on, on fan as a fan favorite. It's got 14 books in the series, 4.4 million words, and 19 days worth of audio. This sprawling story will pull you in and become home for a long time. Reading these books is an experience that you, my friend... uh, Where's my other page of this book? 
What? Okay, well, my notes are incomplete. Technical difficulties. But reading these books is an experience that you haven't really had yet. I know you're on your way with Malazan, but until you've completed it, you're not on... You haven't had this kind of reading experience. If you can imagine going through 14 books or 19 days worth of audio of one story and living in that world. And I promise you that the world is is so well lived in and so thought out and so um, alive that it can fill 14 books and 19 days worth of audio. And the sheer just to experience that is something that you can't get out of these three book series. It's truly a magical kind of experience. And unlike Malazan, the prose is a lot more modern and a lot more traditional. So you can, and the storytelling is a lot more linear as well. And the cast, the main cast, I should say, is a lot more focused, although there are many, many characters. Um, Wikipedia dutifully notes that the series touches on numerous elements of mythology, which is a huge part of this book, including cyclical nature of time, which is in Buddhism and Hinduism, the metaphysical concepts of balance and duality, and respect for nature that you find in Taoism. It also has a creation story very similar to Christianity. It it's, draws on all of these elements of humanity that we can relate to and it uses it to create something completely unique and something that you can live in for a very long time. And then our very own Brandon Sanderson himself was inspired by these works. This were things he grew up reading and we all know that he went on to finish the series including a 300 page chapter in the last book called The Final Battle. Put oh, that that's... in your brain. <laughs> Build, I'm building up to that and then to finally get it 14 books later it's it's the payoff is crazy the benefits of this series length include the build up and payoff of the whole series the amount of development across all aspects of fantasy is incomparable you find the series that feel you will not find a series that feels as lived in as this one and I know you're an audiobook man and this is one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. It has both Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, and it is some of their best work. And I do not say that lightly. It's really terrific. Uh, the Amazon series, TV series, is filming right now. And if we start these books today, our timing could very well line up with the release of the series. Now, obviously, it's 14 books. It's a lot to read. So if you were to choose this series... I would pr propose a change to the destiny round. So instead of tossing a coin, I say we go ahead and start putting the series we pick for you in our fortnightly buddy slot read. And then we'll read Wheel of Time at a slower pace, releasing episodes around maybe once a month and publish the episodes in the non-buddy read time slots as we finish them. That way we Makes can sense. still complete buddy reads on schedule and we're not like weighing ourselves down by having the next 14 episodes dedicated to wheel of time and someone that's not reading along with us won't just tune off for 14 weeks so this is kind of a way we can read it and get through it and it might be a model we'll take on for other long sprawling series as well so I will now leave you with an ending quote, which is a quote that if you choose to read the series, you will read quite a bit. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. That's... That's a strong pitch there. James. It was a long one too, but you know what? It's a 14 book series, so we had to uh, a lot, a little extra time. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you went over both times and then <laughs> sought to justify using reasons related to the things that you pitched, and and that's what it's all about here Just on Friends. Pitching capturing fantasy. the spirit of the works that inspire it. And you certainly captured that spirit, Charles. <laughs> I think you you did a good job, I think, in both of your pitches of really getting across some main themes.
themes of why I would be interested in them. This one, what I got most from it was this idea of being so entrenched in that world right? and feeling like I actually live there and I, I imagine or would hope like know the people there. And that's what I, I think you did a great job of getting right. across Yeah, Because I know one of the main reasons why you haven't picked it up is the length. So to justify the length, it's that it's a kind of experience you can't get in a smaller series because you can get into the specifics of the entire world. Well, and I also like that you noted the, the audiobook bit. Yeah, while I I'm know you're an audiobook guy. With physical pages, Malazan, <laughs> it would be, uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I like to keep a physical book and an audiobook going at the same time. Right now, the physical book is Malazan, which we're not covering. And that leads me. So, yeah, while I'm reading that, I think I would have to audiobook Wheel of Time, at least until I was done with uh, Malazan. And, Charles, this leads me to my question, yes. which is, how are you going to convince me that it is a good idea for me to simultaneously read Malazan and Wheel of Time, <laughs> probably the two longest book series in mainstream <laughs> fantasy? Well... That is a tall order, and if we go with this idea of reading your suggestion and Wheel of Time, that would put you at three books. But look, no one asked you to read Malazan, okay? You picked those up before we ever recorded a single episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy podcast. So I would say what you do in your personal life is up to you, but two books for the show is kind of where we're at. I will say this, though. Wheel of Time is... The only similarities that Wheel of Time and Malazan have is that they're both prolific. That's kind of where the similarities end. <laughs> Wheel of Time is much more uh, traditional. It's, it's very along the lines of a Tolkien-like story, but it's much more expansive. Uh, the magic systems are quite different, and... I would even say better, more thought out, more intricate. Um, so I think you could easily listen to the audiobooks for these. It's not like Malazan where the audiobooks exist, but no one would recommend it just because of the fact that you really need to be following along and referencing character sheets and things like that. You don't need to do that in Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time is much more generous with what it asks of you as a reader or in this case, a listener. And... As an audiobook fan, this was my biggest one of my biggest um, appeals to you is that it's I listened to it on audiobook. It took me like maybe six months to listen to all of them, but this was over just like an hour here, an hour there. But they were terrific, and I had no problems following the story. So you could very easily do that. Um, could you also be reading a third book? Well, that's up to you. I would just say, hey, look, no one asked you to read Malazan. <laughs> you may want to put the press the pause button on Malazan. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about an answer to that question that's mostly shaming me for <laughs> trying to read Malazan. But <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll move to my next question, which is I've heard some not so great things about the female characters in these books that they're not really fleshed out. They're not really strong. There's a lot of, uh, I think it was braid pulling. It's like a, a <laughs> one of the, one yes, of the yes, yes, has. yes. Okay. So there's a few things that the internet loves to just chime in on anytime anyone says anything about Wheel of Time. Braid pulling is one, but that doesn't speak to any character's lack of being fleshed out. It's just a tick that one character has that maybe the author was relying on a bit too much because she kept saying it was pulling her, she keeps pulling her braid like when she's thinking. And it's a really unusual thing to write. And then you, to, to write it over and over again, it was, is interesting. But this series certainly has more female representation than Lord of the Rings does way more. You have a bunch of lead 
lead characters in this series that are female and a lot of the most powerful characters in this series and a lot of leadership roles in this series are female. And the magic system, the most powerful magic users for the most part, are female female as well so there is a lot of representation that being said it is a bit more of a product of the author's time it's not a modern take uh, that you would see more of this like effort of inclusivity and and have a more social spin to it this book doesn't really have much of that it's a much more traditional um Oh, men are like this and women are like this, but it's not in a way that's offensive or insulting. I don't, I don't think that anyone reading this would think that the author is chauvinistic. And if people are, then I think they're way, way overreacting. I think this book has a lot more female representation, more than Mistborn. Like Vin's just one character. There's way more main female characters in in Wheel of Time. So to those people, but are they good? Are they good characters? Oh, for sure. I mean, what I the only thing that I would say that I can kind of like roll my eyes at is the love square, I guess, that's going on in this story. <laughs> but even that's... I know I love a good love square. But that is so like not a, a huge deal. Like every character has their own identity and their own goals in the story. And they're all fleshed out the same. It's like... is. There's a character who's just considered the trickster and he's kind of a jokey rogue type guy. And it's like, oh, is that a caricature of a man? It's like, well, yeah, but no, it's just that character and what his purpose is in the story. And you find the same thing with female characters. But there's enough inclusion in this story and certainly none that are degrading or sexist. Um, So... I I don't think All you'll right. be a, I think you'll have fun identifying some things that are a little more old school but none of it is uh offensive. Okay. Well, I I'll I'll trust you on that, Charles. And I've got one more question. Mm-hmm. I hear there's a slump in books 7 through 10. That is 4 books for those counting at home four giant books yes do i want to put myself through a four book slump charles i would say you're already in a three book slump of malazan (laughs) but i will say this okay there is one book book 10 that is famous for being a slump um i can't speak to seven eight and nine but I will say this. Yes, not a lot happens in book 10. If you were to read the synopsis, it would be this character continues to do this. This character continues to do that. But this is what you're not, this is what you haven't experienced yet in your experience in reading books. You haven't read a 14 book series before, and I hadn't either. That's my only experience with it. And I have to tell you that when you're getting into a series that that is that long, that just becomes part of it. Like in life, not every day is a, is a wild, crazy adventure. Some days you're just having, you know, e- existing and stuff is happening in the books and characters are going through stuff. But in terms of plot progression, it's not like a you don't get that um, Sander Lanch at the end. It, it continues into the next book. The whole point of the book is about time and the cyclic nature of time and destiny and all this other stuff and it's just part of what makes the series so alive and lived in and it what makes it such a unique reading experience is that not only have you sat with these characters as they're fighting and training and going through stuff you've sat with them as they're also governing or just hang or like just being learning things just like going through the day to day or general politicking it's like you see it all and it's that experience that you can't get without having those slower moving points and book 10 is the only one that i remember being a bit on the like it's a detriment in some way but i think you need it it's like life itself you know you got to have the good with the bad and the bad isn't even really bad it's it's just slow but you have to kind of be on board with that if you're choosing to read a 14 book series but the end is 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 very good and 
a lot of well, I would say you do get a Sander Lanch. Right? <laughs> you do eventually in book 14 you get a honest true sander lanch um and that's another thing that i would love to talk about is the whole backstory of sanderson's involvement it's it's just the meta of this series is super interesting but i would say yeah there's gonna be points where the story beats are a lot slower but i would also say that's part of the unique experience that this book has to offer. Mm. Uh huh. That's that does sound interesting. <laughs> and you're right. I have I have yet to read. I'm trying to think what Malazan would be it when you read through it. Would be yeah. The long, I th- yeah, but I think to this point, maybe read it, just the three books of Stormlight Archive are so long that it might be the longest altogether of anything I've read. I'll have to think on that, but. Yeah, I've never had 14 books, I can tell you that much. I was so, like, there's nothing quite like starting book nine and being like, oh, God, I have to still read five more books. It's insane. It's so crazy when you're in the middle of it to think about how much you've read and how much you still have to go. And then when it ends, it's like a life milestone. (laughs) Yeah, well, I imagine that feeling that we were talking about when you finish a series and you're like, what do I do next? I oh, that is big time. Times a hundred with Wheel of Time. Big time. Huge. For sure. All right. Well, I've exhausted my questions there. I uh, think I asked all I've three. I've exhausted so. my pitching. Well... Who wants to? Are we ready then to to move on to the decision? I think so. We're on to round three, the decision. This is the point where Dylan will pick one of my series, and I will pick one of Dylan's. By picking them, we are guaranteeing that they're going to be the next two books that we will read on the Friends Talking Fantasy podcast as part of the Buddy Read series. It will be up to the destiny round that we decide what order they are in. But this is the moment right here. This is when we figure out the books that are actually going to go up on the production schedule. Wow. I know. The moment's finally here. It is. Do you want to do the honors? Do you want me to, to, to go pick? first? Yeah. Oh, God. You okay. have a, I do not envy your choice. Well, I I think it's okay because I I obviously have two great choices. You know? Yes, and I think you you know two right choices the way I'm seeing it. Yes, I feel and that way also for yours. I so I feel like the the biggest pro when it comes to Lord of the Rings is that it's this it's got that epicness and it's this this thing that's just missing from my fantasy resume or for my academia breath or (laughs) my academia uh, colleagues out there. Mm -hmm. I am missing this on my CV. If (laughs) yes, I, I can't say that I have read the Lord of the Rings and, and just that's so crazy. The movies is, uh, yeah, is really enough. Going to middle earth also. And at the same time, then, there's Wheel of Time, which I've wanted to read really badly for a long time. I feel like it's it's got that stuff you're talking about, about uh, living in a world and really getting to know people, and I, I really enjoy that. And it's, uh, it's a really, really tough call for me here. But I think I've made my decision. Let's hear it. I am deciding that it is time, Charles. Yes. It is time oh my that God. I get around to reading Lord of the Rings. Wow. It has been too long. That is this is too music long, to my ears. I can't even I can almost not believe it. Talking about this, what and, next? Uh, what's next for me now? Once you've read that, there's gonna be nothing. <laughs> Wheel of time, maybe. 
Well, I definitely want to read Wheel of Time at some point, so let's uh, let's keep that in our headspace. I, 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 I feel strongly about that. And I think when it comes to what we're going to actually officially put on our next two reads, though, it's got to be Lord of the Rings, and I'm ready. Wow. I'm ready. I think you made a great pick. I th- Wheel of Time is a great series, but Lord of the Rings is just one we have to just get you through, and it's going to be such a great journey. I'm very excited. Yeah. I always it's- feel like it's such a, like, oh, fantasy podcast coming out of the gate talking about Lord of the Rings, but in the context of, like, books that I've read and you haven't, this is the one. So I think you made a great choice. Yeah, Charles, and I think this is why I need a buddy for sure. to do buddy reads with because, you know, I could never get around to justifying reading Lord of the Rings for a lot of what my own just personal subjective likes are in the genre, but because I wanted to hear you out and hear why it was time I read it, I thought I... I I can't even tempt myself with Night <laughs> Angel, which is right along lines of the type I of know, stuff I, I put that in there so for I you. Let you. Yeah, I let you pitch it to me, and you sold me. I'm so that glad. I've waited long enough. You're going to, like, let's just read through this beginning part that takes place in Hobbiton. You're just going to have to read a lot about Hobbits, but I promise you we get to the Council of Elrond, and it's off to the races. So very excited for that. Okay, now you've yeah. left me with the difficult choice of deciding between the King Killer Chronicles and the Broken Earth trilogy. So, man, like there's so much I like about both. The Broken Earth trilogy calls to me just because of how different it is from every other book series that's on this list. And. I've read enough fantasy in my day that the idea of something unique and interesting is very, very appealing. Um, that being said, King Killer Chronicles, I do feel like I've been left out of the conversation. I feel like this is almost my Lord of the Rings to, to an extent. It's at the top of everyone's list. It's sold a boatload of copies. It's just a huge, huge force in modern fantasy. And please pitch Broken Earth again, but I'm going to pick the King Killer Chronicles. Wow. It's a tough choice, but I'm ready to be part <sighs> of the conversation. And I think the podcast, yeah. like the reason I never picked it up in my personal reading was because I didn't want to forget it and have to reread it again. I was just prioritizing established series that I could form a complete opinion on. But the podcast, having getting to record my discussions with my buddy and the buddy read is all I need to be able to jump right back into the series. So I'm like all my initial concerns about reading King Killer Chronicles are basically put aside. So I'm just excited to choose that as my pick. This is so cathartic. <laughs> I mean, why why didn't we start a podcast a long time ago, Gerald? <laughs> I Apparently know. Apparently that was all the push that <laughs> you needed to read King Killer and all the push that I needed to read Lord of the Rings. I mean, there were times when I thought you'd, you wouldn't... I mean, I sincerely, if you asked me a year ago, probably thought you wouldn't read King Killer until a third book was announced. And because I have no idea when that's going to be, I was just champ at the bit to to get you to read this thing for sure and and now it looks like we're we're finally doing it i know I'm, Th- these I'm are going to be some about these two books. these are going to be some great buddy reads two series. they're going to be some great buddy reads in the future so that is something you as the listener yes you can look forward to these are two huge players i mean does it get much bigger than lord of the rings and then King Killer Chronicles and, and the conversation of modern fantasy is everyone's top five. So this is going to be some big stuff, and I'm very excited. But please, please bring Broken Earth Trilogy and Gentleman Bastard series uh, and save those pitches. And uh, I'm sure in the long tenure of this of this show, we will read it all. 
But for now, it has been decided. King Killer Chronicles and The Lord of the Rings are our two series that we're going to cover in our buddy reads going forward. Wow. Very I'm cathartic. I'm all just pumped up from this I exercise know. we did. Because not only is it good for helping us figure out what to read next but also for getting us hyped exactly and it it's a great way of also keeping things in the back burner i mean i've got a great pitch for um the night angel trilogy that i'll have to wait for another time but no this was great this leads us into our last our last round which is destiny the most exciting part is now, you know, conclu- we picked the series, but then then the question became, look, we're two people. How do we pick what we read first? And although I would be happy to read either one of these next, the order isn't that crucial to me. We do need to come up with a system. So for this, it's just a good old fashioned coin toss. So I gone ahead and typed coin toss into Google and I have shared the screen with no you haven't i i did didn't i i'm letting them behind the curtain oh i didn't click the Charles share button not hold on the okay right now. now you should be able to see it i can see it all right so we are now on the google google has its own coin toss thing this was news to me but mm-hmm. here's what we're going to do seeing as i'm going to be the one that's going to flip it you can call it oh Okay. So you gotta go heads, Charles. You gotta all go right. heads. So heads. I'm going heads. So heads, King Killer. Then? Yes. Is that how it works? Heads. We are reading King Killer Chronicles, Tales, Lord of the Rings. Here we go. This is really That's- exciting for all you listeners at home. <laughs> oh! Whoa! And the big upset. It's heads. <laughs> I don't know if that's an upset, but it does mean that we'll be heading into King Killer Chronicle wow. next up. But don't you worry, Charles. You have me on record committed to reading <laughs> Lord of the Rings with you in our, I guess it'll be our third buddy read. So Destiny I'm has played its hand. Of these. We have turned it into the hands of the podcasting gods, and they have brought down the schedule determined by fate and destiny. King Killer Chronicles will be the next read, followed by The Lord of the Rings. Friends at home, you're not going to want to miss any of that. We have a huge, 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 huge list of buddy reads to go through now. But we still have one more book of Mistborn to discuss. So you're definitely going to want to come in next week and listen to that. Yeah, not so fast, listener. That's Don't right. you run away and start reading King Killer Chronicle just yet. Yeah, hopefully Maybe. you've got those last couple hundred pages of uh, of uh, Mistborn to go. And let me tell you, those last couple hundred pages are doozies. So definitely catch up on the series for next week doozies they are Charles. doozies so thank you for listening everybody dylan this has been a pleasure a treat i'm very excited about the prospects of the show so many great conversations are going to be had oh charles i cannot <laughs> king killer this chronicles come true Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you for listening, and go forth and conquer, friends.